Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Windward Community College second annual Band Books Week readout. Yeah. Band Books Week is this week. It's an annual awareness campaign that celebrates the freedom to read, draws attention to banned and challenged books, and highlights persecuted individuals. The books featured tonight and plays and poems have all been targeted with removal or restriction in libraries and schools. The reason these books remain available is thanks to the efforts of librarians, teachers, educators, students like you, and members of the community who speak out for freedom and read them and keep them available to us. So thank you for participating and thank you for supporting. A few housekeeping items. Upstairs, you'll notice that there was a little, there was a tall board. It was a selfie station. We would like to encourage every single one of you to go up to the selfie station, stand in front of the, uh, what was it, the thing. <laughs> stand in front of the thing. Um, hold up the other, the sign that says, I was caught reading banned books. And if you've got an Instagram um, account, you can hashtag WCC library, and it'll show up on the WCC library Instagram feed. <laughs> and it's gonna be on a loop in the library. So we can see who's been here and who was caught reading banned books. And that's all of you guys. One final reminder, we're trying to keep the readings under three minutes. So including your introduction, why your book was banned, and your reading, we're trying to keep it all under three minutes so that we can meet the guidelines of the Banned Books Week YouTube station. So if you haven't filmed yourself or timed yourself already, Mariko, our lovely librarian and camera person and <laughs> timekeeper, will be holding up signs in the back that even I can see with my old eyes. This one says one minute left, and the thank you means thank you. <laughs> She's so nice. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, one final thing. If at the last minute you decide for any reason you do not want to be filmed, go ahead and hold up the very pink card towards the camera, and she will turn the camera off. Just in case you forget what this is for, it says, please don't film me. <laughs> Wave it once, set it down, and we'll turn the camera off. Um, so without further ado, we have some people hanging out up top. Thanks, people hanging out up top. I would like to invite our first reader, Kathy Helfrich, who will be reading from Harry Potter. Dun, dun. Helfrich, and I bet you didn't know that Harry Potter was the most banned book of the first uh, decade of the 21st century. Can you believe that? This is the book that allowed millions, brought millions of kids back to reading the book. So, if you've only seen the movies, I'm going to read you a scene that maybe you didn't know about. If you remember the giant Hagrid gave up the secret on where the Philosopher's Stone was uh, in exchange for a dragon egg, which subsequently hatched, and he named the dragon Norbert, the cute little fire-breathing dragon. So the kids, Ron, Harry, and Hermione, have to deal with Norbert. The following week dragged by, Wednesday night found Hermione and Harry sitting alone in the common room long after everyone else had gone to bed. The clock on the wall had just chimed midnight when the portrait hole burst open. Ron appeared out of nowhere as he pulled off Harry's invisibility cloak. He'd been down at Hagrid's hut, helping him feed Norbert, who was now eating dead rats by the crate. It bit me, he said, showing them his hand which was wrapped in a bloody handkerchief. I'm not gonna be able to hold a quill for a week. I tell you, that dragon's the most horrible animal I've ever met. But the way Hagrid goes on about it, you'd think it was a fluffy little bunny rabbit. When it bit me, he told me off for frightening it. And when I left, he was singing it a lullaby. There was a tap on the dark window. It's Hagrid, Hedwig, Hedwig, said Harry, hurrying to let her in. She'll have Charlie's answer. The three of them put their heads together and read the note. Dear Ron, how are you? Thanks for the letter. 
I'd be glad to take the Norwegian Ridge back, but it won't be easy getting him here. I think the best thing will be to send him over with some friends of mine who are coming to visit me next week. Trouble is, they mustn't be seen carrying an illegal dragon. Could you get the ridge back up to the tallest tower at midnight on Saturday? They can meet you at three and take him away while it's still dark. Send me an answer as soon as possible. Love, Charlie. Charlie's Ron Crow. They looked at each other. We've got the invisibility cloak, cloak, said Harry. It shouldn't be too difficult. I think the cloak's big enough to cover two of us and Norbert. It was a mark of how bad the last week had been that the other two agreed with him. Anything to get rid of Norbert and Malfoy. Malfoy had been in by an honor. There was a hitch. By next morning, Ron's bitten hand had swollen to twice its usual size. He didn't know whether it was safe to go to Madame, Madame Pomfrey. Would she recognize the dragon bite? By the afternoon, though, he had no choice. The cut had turned a nasty shade of green. It looked as if Norbert's fangs were poisonous. Harry and Hermione rushed to the hospital wing at the end of the day to find Ron in a terrible state in bed. It's not just my hand, he whispered, although it feels like it's about to fall off. Malfoy told Madame Pomfrey he wanted to borrow one of my books so he could come and have a good laugh at me. He kept threatening to tell her what really bit me. I have told her it was a dog, but I don't think she believes me. It shouldn't have hit him at the Quidditch match. That's why he's doing this. Harry and Hermione tried to calm Ron down. It'll be over at midnight on Saturday, said Hermione. But this didn't soothe Ron at all. On the contrary, he sat bolt upright and broke into a sweat. Now, if you want to know what happens next, I bet they have this book at the library. <laughs>